Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Arvind Shanmugaval from Apache Design, who's going to explain some of the difficulties about what's going on at 1416 nanometers with FinFETs. So Arvind, what are the problems with, with 1416 nanometer? What are you seeing and how do we get around them? Yeah, 14 and 16 nanometer design has been particularly challenging for the design community. If you look at the 16 nanometer or the 14 nanometer nodes, uh, we typically are dealing with FinFETs here. And FinFETs come with a lot of design challenges, and yet with a lot of design advantages as well. 16 nanometer, for example, has very high drive strength capabilities. The transistors are able to drive almost 25% more current than the existing 20 nanometer nodes. If you look at the leakage characteristics, they are 30 to 40% less leakier than their 30 or 40 nanometer counterparts. But the challenges with the 60 nanometer node is it also comes with a lot of reliability issues. If you look at the total amount of current densities that we're pushing through the metal interconnects, they're close to 25% to 30% more than the 20 nanometer nodes. Whereas the electromigration limits have reduced by close to 30%. So that basically gives us a big problem in terms of solving electromigration issues. There are also other issues related to ESD that uh, 16 nanometer node has. Uh, for example, uh, there are no parasitic discharge paths in the 16 nanometer node. Uh, the key challenges that uh, we usually talk about in 16 nanometer node is uh, there are basically threefold. The first is electromigration. Uh, the second is ESD or electrostatic discharge. And the third is thermal concerns. So in today's uh, session, I'll be focusing more on the electromigration and ESD. So let me note down what we typically have in terms of the challenges. EM, ESD, and thumb. On the EM side, I did mention that our interconnects have 30% lesser margin. So you have a 30% reduction in EM limits, and you have a 25% increase in current densities. So basically, as we decrease our EM limits and increase our current density, we are faced with a huge EM problem. Not only are we going to deal with this EM problem, we're also going to deal with self-heat issues. The more amount of current you push through your interconnects, the larger amount of joules self-heat you're going to get. Making sure your RMS EM is basically checked is extremely important. The other aspect on electromigration is we're also seeing high current spikes because of the increased current densities. Because of these high current spikes, because of simultaneous devices switching, we're also forced to check peak electromigration rules. Historically, we used to only check average and RMS for EM rules, but today in the 16 nanometer node, we have to be checking peak as well. So these are some of the challenges in general for electromigration. On the ESD side, there are two major issues that we are faced with. The first issue on ESD is there is no snapback device profiles for 16 nanometer node yet. This is, however, being tackled by different foundries, and I'm sure there will be a solution pretty soon. So lack of snapback is a problem. The next aspect is no parasitic discharge paths. With these uh, two different issues, ESD design becomes even more challenging. But the good part about ESD here is because the devices can drive more current, we have a lesser amount of device area that needs to be used for 16 nanometer designs, uh, which is one of the good parts about ESD. The third is on the thermal side. On thermal, uh, we are basically dealing with, again, two different issues. One is the self-heat. 
This is because of the interconnects driving a larger amount of current, a larger amount of AC current, if you will. And this is typically given by the RMS currents. And the third is heat pathways are restricted in the FinFET devices. Typically, if you look at a FinFET device, we are dealing with a height of a fin that restricts the flow of heat from a device to the actual substrate. If you look at the planar transistors, there's a lot more free flow of heat from the substrate of a device into the actual bulk substrate. Uh, an example of a FinFET device is essentially going to be, you're going to have a fin and a gate over the actual fin. So this is going to be your gate and this is an actual fin. The heat discharge pathways has to be only from here into your substrate. We really cannot go anywhere out here. Whereas on a planar transistor, you basically have your heat discharge pathways are going to be all over your substrate. Let's call this a N plus, N plus, and a P sub. Uh, discharge pathways are a lot more in this case. The next aspect I wanted to talk about is uh, power noise and power integrity. If you look at the 20 nanometer node or the 28 nanometer node, we typically have a one volt supply. And with a one volt supply, the power consumption could be you know, a matter of uh, you know, a few watts. But with the 60 nanometer node, the supplies are going as low as 0.7 volts or 700 millivolts. Now we have uh, close to a 300 millivolt drop in the actual voltage supply. And if you know, the actual power consumption for CMOS devices have a quadratic relationship with the actual supply voltage. Uh, so we're basically dealing with a close to a 50% reduction in power just with 300 millivolt drop in supply voltages. This is the good part, but the bad part is a 100 millivolt change in your supply voltage can lead to a significant amount of issues in terms of delay for the devices. Uh, 100 millivolt on a 1 volt supply versus 100 millivolt on a 700 millivolt supply causes a huge difference in the delay of these devices. So what needs to be done here? The first thing is we need to understand the impact of these supply voltage variations. We need to be able to uh, perform a transient voltage drop analysis or a transient simulation to capture some of these voltage drop issues. And to be able to do this, the first thing is we need to model our device as such. The first thing is the IC needs to be modeled accurately. And when we model the ICs, we need to model every transistor with its respective transient current profile and the interconnects of the on-die uh, network, power delivery network. The next aspect is we need to be able to model the package and the board parasitics. Typically, package and board parasitics can come either as a form of an RLC netlist or it can come as an S-parameter or touchstone format. So we have the IC, we have the package, and finally, we have the board. And again, the board parasitics can either come as a form of an S-parameter or an RLC interconnect model. And finally, we have the voltage regulator module. The reason why I draw all three IC package and board is any type of power integrity solution needs to perform an analysis with the impact of the package and the board on the actual IC subsystem. And without the impact of the package and the board, we're only seeing half the picture. So on a 700 millivolt supply voltage, we have a 100 millivolt delta V variation. That is basically a huge amount of noise. And typically when we have huge DIDTs on the IC and a large number of um, inductive elements on the package, we could run into L times DIDT issues or the inductive voltage drop issues. Similarly, when you have on-die decoupling caps, they may not really work at these different operating frequencies. So we need to make sure that the on-die capacitance is placed very carefully on the die. 
understanding the impact of the package as well. The other aspect on power integrity I wanted to touch upon was the requirement for accurate package models. If you look at today's designs, every IC has been partitioned into multiple blocks, and these blocks operate at different frequency domains or have different power domains. Now, the moment we model a package, we need to understand the localized distribution of current through the actual packages. So package designs and package extraction models needs to have bump resolution for on-die analysis. For example, if you take a simple IC, uh, let's say it's designed in 20 nanometer or 16 nanometer node, you have different power densities in different regions. For example, region A could have a different power density than B and different power density than C. And understanding the power densities in these regions is of most importance. The next is understanding the package that goes over these regions is also important. So a bump resolution package model, having different bumps being modeled with the accurate uh, extraction is going to be very important. And we have seen cases where using a lumped model versus a distributed model shows close to a 50% difference in some cases of voltage drop analysis. Arvind, thank you very much for the explanation. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ed. Uh, these are serious problems that we have to contend with, and uh, hopefully the uh, design community and the EDA community is responding uh, properly.